let the camera run this time. You can watch me struggle like all kinds of struggles. Feel my pain. What's going on, YouTube? New year, new car. Um, so here's the new vehicle we're adding to the fleet. It is a 2009 GMC Chevy Silverado. Um, it had some very minor issues with it that I know I can fix and the seller gave me a hell of a deal because what are minor issues to me are major issues to other people. So the issue I'm here to fix today is that this electrically powered folding mirror here stripped out, totally stripped out, does not go in and out anymore. There's a gear inside and that gear is probably worn out. Uh, I watched a couple of videos online and, you know, no offense to the other folks, but I was not impressed. So I thought, hey, I'll make my own video um, and go over some of the things that other folks skipped. All right, the video that I saw said just replace the gear and that's a whole lot of work. So what I, what I did was I ordered an entirely new mirror that we have right here. So an entirely new mirror. This mirror is not exactly the same. So this mirror that's currently on my car has an LED chevron right there, as well it's a heated mirror. The replacement mirror that I'm using, I'm just harvesting it for parts, that's it. So I got the cheapest mirror I could find. No LED turn signal, probably not heated. It does, however, have a power fold-in motor. And that is the part that I'm gonna harvest out of here and put in to this joint here and we'll show you how that works. So uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start pry it apart. If you have a pry tool, that will work better on the soft plastics. Um, I'm lazy and I don't know where my valuable pry tool is, so I'm just gonna use a screwdriver. We're probably gonna ditch most of this anyways and replace it with the new gear. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, come in here and I'm gonna crack, pun intended, crack apart crack off this piece here. Now this is this is all one piece, or it's better if it comes as one piece. So let's see, just pull, 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 pull. There we go. Soft fingers, better than hard plastic. So here's the piece that comes off. I find it's actually better to leave the mirror assembly on the car. So now that that piece is off, take that. Leave it on the car because as I'm pulling and jerking, Nothing really holds it better, like it's nice and solid, and, you know, I'm wiggling the whole car here. If I take this whole piece off the car and then start to pry, it's gonna be a lot harder. Uh, so the next thing that really people struggle with or that I struggled with is there wasn't a good video showing you how to get the mirror off. Okay, now that we have the back cover off, the next part is going to be the hardest part, and that is getting the mirror off. Now the mirror is held into place by a number of half moon shaped clasps right here. The only way to get the mirror out is you don't pop it out forward, you actually lift it up. So that's the trick here is to lift it straight up. Unfortunately, this bezel's in the way, so we can't lift it up um, unless we tilt the mill forward, the mirror forward. And even then, we're only getting like a little piece. So maybe I do this side first, and then I push the mirror out and do the other side second. Now there's four clasps, and I really only have access to two of them. So let's zoom in and see if we can see the first one here. Perfect. Okay, so the first one is right here. I zoomed in on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wedge my screwdriver in underneath it, pull straight up, there we go. So we can see it here. Pull up, 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 there we go, and it popped off. Okay, so that's, and you're gonna have to do that a lot harder. I pre-loosened it for the sake of the camera. You're gonna have to really get in there, twist and pry and pull up. Once you get that end up, then now we've gotta go grab the other one. So the other one we can only get at from down here. So let me reposition the camera and I'll show you that one. Okay, now from the bottom side, I'm gonna push the mirror out this way and up. And then the, the half moon doodad is right there. Obviously, no amount of zooming is going to help here because it's, it's really down in there. And then the mirror comes out and then we can start disconnecting these pieces here. Okay, now that we've got the mirror off, I wanted to show you guys what these hooks look like that hold the mirror in place. So for that was on the back side, we were able to reach this one in the top, you know, towards the driver's side, and then this one in the bottom towards the passenger side because of this gaping opening here. So that that part's facing out, that part's facing down. 
and then you'll be able to kind of slide it out over this bezel here. Got some torque screws in there. So that's a T10 and there's four of them and they're located one, two, and then down here, three, four. So we'll undo these guys. Okay, got all the four undone now. Now, sure to lose some screws here. I'll try to catch, see if I can catch some. Okay, got all four. Okay, here on the business end of things, we're gonna unplug this piece right here. Take that set aside. Here's a little clip, pull up on this clip, and then this piece comes off right here. All right, next piece is we're gonna punch these four, or sorry, these three out. Uh, if you don't have a punch, go buy one. I don't know any other way to do this, so that's what we're doing. Okay, pull these three out and then lift straight up on this piece. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And as hard as it is to get off, it's not, it's equally hard to get on. So there we go. Carefully feed the wires through here. So this is the motor that turns it in and out. There's a gear in here. I tried getting this cap off and this is where I run into differences of opinion between the way I wanna do it versus the way that um, folks in the other video did it is I couldn't get this cap off. I see that it's got some, it's pushed in there and it's probably locking that piece in. I could not get this off. So instead I'm just gonna replace this whole piece and that's where the harvesting comes into play. Um, so here we can quickly take off this wire here. There we go. So that wire is off and that'll all feed through there. Take these off with the Torx and then um, I will put, take this piece off put the new one on just so that it's nice and solid and held in there and then start disassembling that one. Same procedure and then harvest this whole piece out of here. Wish that this part was sold, but, uh, well it is sold, but the price was more than just buying a whole new one, so. Okay, friends, we're back. So I used a T20 bit here to loosen up four screws here. Take off the, uh, the four T20 Torx screws there and then start feeding this through the very small hole. It's too small for all of this stuff. There we go. Okay, and then this is the piece, again, that I'm gonna harvest out of the other one um, and replace. Now we're on the inside of the truck. I'm gonna take off this plate here. I'll probably do it with my hands since I did it before. There we go. Pull out this piece of foam here. It'll get stuck on the, uh, the places where it goes in, so you don't want to rip, otherwise you'll rip these out. So be careful pulling that out. And then um, I'll get a uh, 10 millimeter and take those out. Okay, 10 millimeter. I brought both a uh, ratcheting C-wrench as well as a socket. Okay, and I don't want to lose them, so I'm gonna get, try to get my hands as far down in there as I can to catch it. Okay, that was the hardest one. Up here at the top, there is a, a friction pin, so I have to pull pretty hard to get that sucker off. So this part's loose. There we go. Okay, and then thread these through. This big hunk of metal piece, wonderful. Okay, I took off the little foam piece right here. Weather sealant, I'm gonna fish this through insides just so I have more room to work with. It will, of course, go back before the end. All right, here's my new mirror that I'm gonna disassemble here. Okay, I can feed these pieces in. Stick that on, like so. And I'm just doing this to firm it up. Here, I'll go ahead and pause it and just put these back on. Remember, hung on to these real tight, two hands. You don't wanna drop them down in there. Otherwise, you will be taking the door apart. Okay, so I got the new one um, screwed in. Obviously, you know, not electrically connected. So the trick is, can I get this back piece off 
without damage unit. So from this side, we can see uh, there was a note on it that came and said, do not fold it in or fold it out because you'll break the, the gear and the motor. So I want to see if I can get in here and pry this loose without folding it the way I had it before, which was really, that was the easy button or that was the easy way of getting her done. Um, the old one was already broken, so I wasn't worried about it. So here I'll get my pry tool vis-a-vis -vis this metal screwdriver. Okay. So can... All right, looks good. Cool, and this one has a, a light, which the other one did not have. So I'll see about if that's something I want to retrofit over. I'll let the camera run this time. You can watch me struggle like all kinds of struggles. Feel my pain. And then of course this one being designed differently has easy peasy Phillips screwdriver uh, heads everywhere. So no need for punches and T15 torque screws. We just get in here. The two on the top are significantly longer than the two on the bottom. So I'll carefully pull that out. Catch all the screws. Okay, this thing pries open, interestingly enough. And then disconnect right here. Okay, there we go. Much nicer build quality. Okay, so we fish all this through here. Disconnect the motor. And then again, with the Phillips screwdriver, easy peasy. Okay, that piece comes right off. Okay, there's only two. Pull that up and out. And then obviously you can see this piece is different here, but this is the piece I want. And again, no torque screws. It's just a Phillips screwdriver. So this is pretty amazing, I must say. Got it. That's for that. That's for that. That's for that. So this one is for the puddle light instead of for the turn signal. Interesting. There we go. Pull, 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 pull. There we go. There we go. A lot harder to get in. Okay, so here's our harvested part. Easy peasy, not worrying about disassembling what's inside here, which was the recommendation by the other video. So I'll go ahead and take this off now and start reassembling with the, uh, the old wiring. So that's what's different. Okay, I unscrewed it from the backside, so now all that's left to do is just pull this piece out. I think I'm gonna retain this because the way the, um, the new motor sits in here, it makes sense to use this piece, but I can't use this wiring or shouldn't, it'll be easier just to use the other wiring because that wiring, um, one is already connected in the door. And then two, I think this wire is, it's for the puddle light and the other wire is for the turn signal and you can only have one so, you know, I choose the integrated turn signal. Okay, and then something I want to show you, you can kind of see the difference in the setup. So the old motor was on this one, the new was on this one, and just based on the differences, I'm gonna to have to use the new one um, with the old wiring. So I'll go ahead and put this guy back on, right? Thread the wire through and then put this back on right now. All right, and now we, we took the old wire and we threaded it through the new, new handle here. One thing I'm not ignorant of and I'm gonna point out this plug is not going to work on the new one, so we're going to have to cut it, strip it, and splice it together with the, um, the new style plug for the new motor. Okay, so we got this guy threaded through. 
and securely bolt it in from the other side. So I'll come in with a new motor. And what I'm gonna need here is uh, I need, looks like this plug here, I believe. Like that. And so I'll cut this right here, cut that right there. And look at that, yellow and blue, yellow and blue. So those should go together nicely. Um, when I splice them in. All right, I got those spliced together and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish it up now. So I'll start reassembling. Might not film a whole lot of this. All right, all back together. Last step here is to see if it uh, works. And then finally, we can see the mirror in all its glory. And there you have it, one fully functioning mirror. Okay, well that's all for today, folks. This has been a great project. I actually had a lot of fun and accomplished something like not hitting my mirror against the side pillar every time I pull out of the garage. So very satisfying project. And as an added benefit, I was able to take all the parts, put them back together as best I could, and then sell those on eBay for parts only because it wasn't working, and somebody bought it. And so I was able to recoup a good portion of my investment. So all in all, I was very pleased with how everything turned out. If this was helpful for you, please don't forget to hit that like button or subscribe. Until then, this is Dad Who Does. Take care.